Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to start talking about functions. Okay, so functions are going to allow us to reuse our code, and they're going to be used to make the code easier to understand. And basically, you're going to define them by typing DEF like that, and then your function name, whatever that would be, followed with a list of parameters or attributes or whatever that would be passed inside of them and then you're going to have a colon and then you're going to go and list out all of your code and we've been using pre-made functions in past parts of the tutorial so let's create our own right now this functions going to just add two values and return a sum so I'm just going to call this add numbers and it's going to receive two numbers so num1 and num2 and that brings us to the return statement whenever you list return it's just going to return a value or some type of data to wherever in your code this function was called so what we're going to do is we're just going to go and get the num1 plus num2 and return it and whenever we go and move from our indentation that means that our function code has ended we can now come in and call for our function to execute by saying something like 5 plus 4 is equal to and then call our function name so we'll just say add numbers and then we could throw 5 and 4 inside of there and then whenever we execute it you're gonna see that you get to the result that you would be expecting now one thing that is important to understand is how local variables work. Any variable that is defined inside a function is not going to be available outside of that function. So for example, let's say I create a function called assign name and it's not going to be passed any attributes or parameters. And inside of here I'm going to create a function called name and it's going to have a value of Doug it's not going to return anything you don't need to return anything to be able to call a function however then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that function and then I am going to try to print the value that is inside of name this is going to trigger an error and if we come over here on the right side of the screen you can see name is not defined and the reason for that is this actually throws a name error because just because we created this variable inside of that function it does not mean that it's available outside of the function now of course we could have returned that value but we did not so that brings us to the concept of global variables however it's important to understand that you can't change a global variable even if it is passed into a function and that is because a value and not the actual variable is passed to the function so let's go and create another function. I'm going to call this change name. And it is going to be passed name. And what I'm going to do inside of here is change this value. So let's say we want the name to be mark. Then we're going to define name outside of our function and give it a value of Tom. And this variable defined outside of the function, like I said before, cannot be changed in the function, even if I call it so I can say change name and then pass name into it and as you're gonna see whenever I call print name that indeed that name will not change and it prints Tom out even though I define mark right here okay so very very important concepts to understand so how could we set it up so that we would be able to actually make that change well we could just come in here and say change name we are not even going to pass anything inside of it but instead we could come in and say something like return mark and then say change name and assign it to name that would work that's kind of kludgy and kind of messy so what's another solution well we could do something like let's go and just call this global name just so that it stands out from what we've done before and change this to Sally what we can then do is come in here and mark that we want to use the global variable so global global name and then use global name right here 
to say change it to Sammy if you'd like. Then what we can do is just call change name like this, change this to global name, and run it, and you can see that Sammy was properly assigned because we defined that we wanted to use the global. Another thing that's important to understand because Python differs from other languages is that if you do not return a value, it isn't automatically going to return anything. It will return nothing. So let's say we have get sum and num1 and num2, and we define sum is equal to num1 plus num2. If we say print get sum 5 and 4 and run it, you're going to see that none was returned from that function. However, of course, if we type in return, we're going to get what we expected. All right, so just a couple things to be aware of whenever we are working with functions inside of Python. So now what I'd like to do is that there is no way to check if a string contains a float. So I'd like to make a function that actually is going to provide that functionality. So let's go in here, and I'm going to create a function called isFloat, and it's going to bit a string value passed inside of it. I am going to use exception handling to be able to come in here and decide if something's a float or not. So I'm going to say float string value and this float function here is actually going to throw a value error if indeed it isn't a float. So what I can do then is go return true if it is a float and if it is not a float we can catch that value error. Value error and in that situation we would return false. Let's make sure this is capitalized. Now what we'd be able to do is come out of here and say something like pi is equal to 3.14 and then check if it is a float or not. Is pi a float? And then we can call our is float function and pass pi into it. And if we run it, you can see that yes indeed it is a float. However, if we would come in and change this to a string, you can see it's also going to come back as true as a float. But if we changed it instead into the letter A, you're going to see that it comes back as false. All right, so cool stuff. Now it's time for you to come in here and try to solve a new Python problem. All right, so the problem I'm going to give you here is that you are going to receive an algebraic equation that you are then going to solve for the value of x. And the one thing that you can be sure of is that x will always be the first value that is received. And in this situation, we're only going to be dealing with addition problems. And sample callings of your function would involve print. And then you're going to call solve equation. And the user is going to pass in x plus 4 equal to 9. And then what you would do is provide a solution output of x is equal to 5 if they call the function like that. So go and give it a try. I'm pretty certain that you'll be able to solve this problem. Otherwise, I'm going to provide you with a solution right now. All right, so I'm going to say solve equation, and it's going to be passed an equation. Then what we can do is use split to go and break that equation into parts. So I can say something like x add num1 equal and num2, which is going to be equal to equation split. Now at this point, what I can do is convert the strings into integers, and I can do that, do both of them all on one line. So I can say num1 and num2 is equal to int and num1 comma int num2. And then I just need to convert the result into a string and join it to the string x is equal to whatever the answer is going to be. Return x is equal to, and then from that go plus string, and then go num2 minus num1. And if I then do that and run it, you're going to see that it gives us a final answer of x is equal to 5. All right, so that's it for this video. 
But in the next video, I'm going to show you how to return and receive multiple values. And we're also going to calculate primes and calculate areas for different shapes and talk about main and a whole bunch more. Like always, please leave your questions and comments.